Okay, so number 19, Mary has completely helped me uh, with doing this. So I'll use the correct terminology, but she ran through the, the process of this. Okay, so she's going to stop me if I do anything wrong. So when I see the three different terms on the left-hand side, I'm going to put them in standard form. So the highest exponent first, negative 2 tangent squared, oops, sorry, tangent to the fourth x plus 1 tangent squared x plus 3. This is all on the left-hand side. I know it equals this quantity on the right. All right, after that, I to factor this. So I'm thinking to myself, what two things multiply to equal negative 6 and combine to give us a positive 1? What two things multiply to equal negative 6 and combine to give us a positive 1? And so that's going to be a positive 3 and a negative 2. Okay, so if I take this 4, this remember this is not tangent 4x, it's tangent to the 4th. It should be here. And so I evenly split that at tangent squared and tangent squared. Okay, so I multiply these, I get tangent to the fourth, awesome. These two, when I multiply, I get the negative six, they combine to give me a one. But then, just like we do when we do bottoms up, we have to take this number, negative two, the leading coefficient, and it goes underneath both these terms. So I have tangent squared, negative two divided by negative two is positive one. And then this can't be reduced, so the negative two pushes up. So I have negative two tangent squared x plus three. Now, tangent squared plus 1, when I look at the trig and the two, tangent squared plus 1 right here is the same as secant squared. So this part is secant squared x. And then I can just rewrite this because what I want to do is I want it to equal the left-hand side. So notice that all they did is they took this on the, uh, sorry, on the right-hand side and they just put the number 3 in front. So they took this positive 3, they just put it in a different order, and they put the second. So this is what I now have on the left-hand side, and this is, in fact, equal to the right-hand side. So I have a verified this trig identity. Once again, Mary is processing this much faster than I am, which is wonderful. So when I look at this, let's make sure that I'm looking at the right problem. I'm going to rewrite secant, knowing it's equal to 1 over the cosine, and tangent, I know, is going to be sine over cosine. And then we're going to multiply that eventually by 1 minus the sine. Now that's all on the left hand side. Eventually I want that to write to equal cosine. Give me one second. So I have cosine on the bottom. So when you add fractions and you have a common denominator, cosine stays on the bottom. And then I'm able just to add, in this case, adding the top. So I have 1 plus the sine top. And over here, I have 1 minus the sine, okay? And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to foil these two groups. Now, if you've caught on right now, when you have the exact same thing in both parentheses, the only difference is the plus or minus, you're able just to simply multiply the front, have always the subtraction, and multiply the backs. And the reason that we don't have to do the middles is you get a plus sign, sorry, you get a positive sign um, of x and a negative sign of x, and they cancel out. So this is what I have on the top. On the bottom, I have cosine. I know, I know the trig identity is if I take 1 and I move the sine over, so it's 1 minus sine squared, it would be equal to cosine squared. So my numerator is actually equal to the cosine squared over cosine. Well, that's two cosines on the top, so think of it as cosine times cosine on the top and one cosine on the bottom. So I'm left with just one cosine on top, and that's exactly what I wanted to achieve from the right-hand side. 